this is everything that I am taking on my journey. So let me explain what all this is. This is a 500 milliliter glass bottle that I will use to make water kefir and I will also use it to ferment NRC which I have pineapple coconut and lemon lime that already has sugar in it. If you don't know what NRC is, that's the label, that's what it looks like. It's rich in all the electrolytes as well as lots of vitamin C, that's the pineapple coconut variety. In this particular bottle, I have 12 teaspoons. And in this particular bottle, I have 21 teaspoons. One teaspoon of either this or this will make a half a liter bottle of water kefir. This is for when I want flavor. In the event that I don't necessarily need flavor, I will be taking a tablespoon of already hydrated water kefir grains, which will live in this bottle, either in this mixture or in a simple sugar and Redmond's real salt with water. So that is my everyday fermented water kefir beverage. I'm doing an experiment right now. This has live hydrated milk fair grains. It also contains a combination of heavy cream and whole milk powders. Essentially this is a half and half because I mix the two together. This here, the grains and this powder plus some water, is what I will use to make this size of milk kefir so that I can drink this every day. This is just part of my natural diet and I don't wish to deviate from that. And that's why these glass bottles are worth the wait for me. My body goes through a lot of magnesium, potassium, and vitamin C and sodium in summer months when I'm extremely active, which is why I'm taking extra magnesium. This also prevents me from cramping. I usually take one of these, which is 500 milligrams of magnesium bisglycinate. I take one of these every night. I will continue to do that on this hike. The next thing I have is coffee, which some of this half and half. I will add that to this coffee and I will be using this jar to make my coffee in. Because I'm not cooking anything, everything will be cold soaked. Instead of a sun tea, this will be a sun coffee. So this will be naturally warmed up in this bottle by the sun and the heat. And because I like a little cream in my coffee, that is my morning coffee. Should I choose that in the afternoon I want a snack before dinner, because typically I will only eat one meal a day on this journey. I have some yogurt kefir that I made. So this is milk kefir grains in milk. This is fermenting. And what I do is I remove the grains and then I let this sit in a nut milk bag to separate the curds, which is the heavy white stuff, from the liquid, which is the whey. And that makes a yogurt, a fermented yogurt. So what I did is I took fermented yogurt and added raw honey. And then I left that in my fridge to ferment for about a month. And then I spread that mixture all out on a dehydrator on the lowest setting, which I believe is 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And so this is still a raw live food. All I have to do is add water to this and this can be a meal or a snack. I made this to eat in conjunction with these. These are high fat, high protein, protein balls that I made myself. It all starts with a cereal and I will share the recipe for this cereal in another video. To this particular cereal, I added extra hemp protein powder, extra pea protein powder. I added pure creamed coconut and coconut oil so that that would bind all the ingredients together. And then, I put them in the fridge to harden up, and I will leave these in the fridge until I'm ready to go. But even in the heat, these will store quite well. Originally, I was going to take this cereal in addition to this food, but when I realized that there might be bouts of time where I don't have access to water and I have to conserve my water, that's when I decided to move that out and have this instead. This will essentially be survival food in the event that I don't have a lot of water 
I can still have something that is nutritiously dense in fat, protein, and nutrients that will sustain me until I get to my next water source. My primary food consists of this mixed fish, which is a combination of salmon, tuna, kippered herrings, and sardines, which I dehydrated. I have an oxygen pack in, that, in this. I also have it in my coffee, my egg powder, my milk powder, my yogurt, my liver, and my veggies. So this is a mixed fish that's dehydrated, which I will eat with this. This is farm fresh pastured whole eggs. There's 60 eggs in this container. I scrambled these in a cast iron frying pan without any fat at all. I added salt and pepper, and then when they were cooked, I dehydrated it. I put that crumble into my Vitamix, turned it into a fine powder so that it's not gritty and granule when you add water. Absolutely delicious. With the fish, this could be one meal. And or I have, I was going to take real bacon, but it's, I think it would go rancid. So I have a little bit of simulated bacon, which is made from soy, which again is a good protein. So I'm taking a little bit of bacon bits if I want just bacon and eggs, or if I want bacon, eggs, and fish, I can have that. Fish are incredibly rich in your omega-3 essential fatty oils. And eggs are essentially a superfood because they contain most vitamins and minerals and amino acids that your body needs. To add to this, I have raw liver in this container. So what I did is I cut the raw liver into tiny cubes and I put it on the dehydrator and I allowed it to dehydrate. It took about six days and I dehydrated this again on the lowest setting. That way I could preserve all the enzymes. Once it was fully dehydrated, I put it in the Vitamix. I put it in the Vitamix to turn it into a very fine powder. This is a bamboo spoon. It will hold a teaspoon because that's all I need once a day. So I've kept the spoon right in the container. Because this is raw, it contains all of the water-soluble B and C vitamins that would have been destroyed had I cooked this first and dehydrated. So this in itself is a superfood. Eggs are a superfood, the combination of the two. I could survive just on eggs and liver, but I want variety, which is why I'm bringing the fish, is why I'm bringing the bacon bits. And then I have fermented veggies in here. I started with my own homemade fermented kraut, which was made of green cabbage, carrots, and beets. So I fermented that, and then I dehydrated it. I dehydrated this on the lowest setting, again, to retain all the probiotics. I don't want to destroy them. Once it was fully dehydrated, I put it into my Vitamix and made it into a very fine powder. To that kraut, I added some of this Mega Flora for Women by Mega Food. This contains burdock root, dandelion root, cranberry, and this also contains lactobacillus, a bunch of different strains here. So again, this is a prebiotic and a probiotic, which is why I put it into this container. So to the kraut and to this, I also added some of this. This is, again is a mega food. This is daily energy. This is incredible for mental and physical performance after a huge hike. This contains burdock root, elocero root, ashwagandha root, chromium, organic green tea, and B12. It also contains organic brown rice. It is the eleuthero that provides the physical stamina as well as the B12. This is a fine powder as were these. I removed the powder from the capsules and then I combined it all with the kraut powder. This is the finished product. So essentially this is prebiotic and probiotic and it's partially fermented because of the kraut that I added to it. This will be all the vegetables that I need with my eggs, my fish, my liver, and my bacon bits. And because this is fermented, when I mix it in with these foods, that is why I am taking a small glass jar to put all of this into because this will ferment and I don't want this to ferment in plastic because 
even if it's BPA free, the chemicals from the plastic will leach into my food and I don't want that. So long as this is dehydrated, it will not leach from the plastic. It just needs to be dark so that sunlight doesn't damage it. But when I hydrate that, it needs to be in glass, which is why I'm willing to sacrifice a little extra weight to have the proper vessel that I need. And of course, this is my bamboo. It's a fork and a spoon in one. I usually take this when I travel and when I hike. It's perfect for this type of adventure. In the milk, I have a little wooden spoon. In the liver, I have a little wooden spoon. So this way, I don't have to use one spoon and mix my liver in with my milk. And I used bamboo for the most part. So with the glass containers and all of these containers and everything that's in the containers, this entire grouping of food weighs 7.3 pounds. And that should be enough food for 35 days minimum and 50 days maximum. Because I'm not leaving for another couple months, I'm just putting all of this fish, the eggs, my coffee. These are organic whole coffee beans that I just freshly ground. I want to make sure that stays fresh. My liver and my fermented veggies. I'm just keeping it in the fridge to help preserve it until I'm ready to go. In order to keep animals away from my food at night, I will be hanging this stainless steel bag. And inside of that, I will have these odor-proof bags. So I have two large bags in here and I will put all of my food containers in these bags and then put them in this mesh bag. And I have rope and I have a sock that I can put a stone in to help throw it over the branch so I can string it up high. And this is what I will use to make certain that nothing gets into my food at night. I did opt to pay a little more money for the stainless steel just because I'm carrying such a little amount of food. I don't mind sharing on the best of days, but I think I'm gonna probably need all that food for myself. So that's how I will hang up my food at night. In my next video, I will show you what I'm taking to carry water and how I will purify water because there's not going to be extremely clean water sources along the trail. In subsequent videos, I will talk about and I will show you my tent and my sleeping arrangement. I'll talk a little bit about footwear. I'll talk about self-care because that's a huge one for me, especially because I have several disabilities. I'll talk about my clothing and I'll show you what I'm wearing on this hike. I'll talk about first aid, sun and heat exposure, bug prevention. And finally, I'll talk about different filming equipment and any other little miscellaneous things that I'll be taking along this journey. For today, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you real soon.